Hello dears, let's discuss the question and answers from the chapter The Rightful Inheritors of the Earth which is included in your textbook Nature Matters, readings on life and nature. When you open the textbook at page number 29, you can see the short answer question. The first question is, at the beginning of the story, why did the narrator assume his future was secure? Answer. At the beginning of the story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, the narrator assumes that his future is secure since he could buy a two-acre plot with the coconut palms and an old house. He imagines that for the rest of his life, he would be able to live happily in that house by using the earnings he can garner by selling the coconuts. Now moving on to the second question. Who were the visitors to the farm? Answer. Once Bashir and his wife settled in the newly bought house, they noticed some trespassers or visitors who disturbed their homes. These visitors include birds, butterflies, crows, hawks, mongooses, foxes, a cobra, squirrels, rats, bats, etc. Now we will move on to the third question. Uh, what was the attitude of the visitors towards the dog? Answer. Bashir and his wife had proudly owned a watchdog named Shan. But the visitors didn't even give an impression that they are watched over by this dog. They were not at all frightened by him. Now moving on to the fourth question. What was the complaint of the wife about his squirrels and crows? Answer. A Bashi's wife Fabi, Fatima Bashi, complains that though the jackfruits are ripened, it seems they will be getting any since the squirrels and crows are feasting on it. She doesn't even need to mention the matter of grass and mangoes which are all eaten up by the birds and bats. Now the fifth question. Why couldn't the cobra go anywhere else? Answer. The bushy at first, at first fails to shun away the cobra which paid him a visit. He later feels really for it. He understands that the whole world is taken over by man and so there is no place of their own for the animals. If anyone starts to tell the cobra to go away from their land, he feels that the cobra will have nowhere else to go. Now the sixth question. What was the narrator's reaction to his wife's suggestion of buying a gun? Answer. A Bashi never loves to support his wife's idea that they should use a gun to kill the bats, the foxes and the tall cats. He doesn't support her in this and he tells that Guns might not have invented at all since it raises threats at the lives of God's creatures. Now the seventh question. How does the family tackle the problem of rats? Answer. Once the disturbance of the rats run rampantly, Bashi's wife goes for a two hours shopping and buys some rat poison. She mixes it with the bananas, rice, tapioca and keeps these poisoned articles everywhere around the compound. Now the eighth question. Explain the effect of uh, the poison used by the narrator's wife. Answer. Uh, once the disturbance of the rats run rampantly, Bashi's wife goes for a two hour shopping and buys some rat poison. Within the time of four days, five hens, twelve squirrels, two hunted rats and a cat disappeared. Now the ninth question. Uh, who was suspected of destroying the coconuts? Who were the real culprits? Answer. The owls were suspected of destroying the tender coconuts in Bashi's plot. Later he and his wife find out that it were not the all but the bats who were feeding on the coconuts.
Now moving on to the 10th question. Now why did the narrator's wife and cousin return scared? Answer. Bashir's wife and cousin go to kill the bats but they return with their frightened faces because the people who live nearby the temple came against them with a threatening voice. They said that if these people shoot at the bats, they will kill them for sure. Now moving on to the 11th question. Uh, what did the narrator eventually decide about the birds and animals on his farm? Why? The answer. The narrator eventually decides that the things available in his land rightfully belong to all the birds and animals. He would love to subsist to the leftover things after the animals and birds enjoy them as their own. Now moving on to the last question, the twelfth question. Uh, what do you understand by the term inheritors? Answer. Bashir, through his story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, proclaims that all living beings are the rightful inheritors of the earth. They are created by the same God who has given shape to human beings and so they should have a share of their own on everything that God has created. Now let's move on to the discussion of the paragraph and essay questions. As I usually do, I have included all the paragraph questions within the essay itself. So let's discuss the essay questions. First one is the story, the rightful inheritors of the earth presents two different perspectives of attitude regarding birds and animals on the farm. How does the narrator's perspective differ from that of his wife? The second question is, the story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, presents the moral that the earth does not belong only to the humans. Discuss. And the last question is, in the story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, the villagers consider the bats to be the souls of their ancestors. Uh, this makes them protect the bats from people who seek to kill them. Discuss how certain social or religious beliefs help in conserving flora and fauna from the dangers of extinction. So as I said, the paragraph questions are included within the essay, so not the idea. The second paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number 3 and 6 from the textbook. The third paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number 1, 2 and 4 from the textbook. The fourth paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number 5 from the textbook. Now let's move on to the first paragraph of the essay. The introduction paragraph of the essay. It is often said that the earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. The famous American writer Luther Standing Bear once said, The animals have rights, the right of man's protection, the right to live, the right to multiply, the right to freedom, and the right to man's indebtedness. We as human beings exist to share the wealth of the planet with everyone in this big family or the greater life system. Everyone should be able to feed and maintain the physical body. In a story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, why a moment Bashi passes through his words such an understanding? It is a brilliant account of Bashi's love of nature and a compassion for all creatures, even the vicious ones. The stories included in his collection, Memoirs of Abu or Abu Vinde or Makal. Now we will move on to the second paragraph of the essay. So as I said, the second paragraph of the essay can be written as an answer to the paragraph question number 3 and 6. So paragraph question number 3 is, why does the narrator think that God created a variety of creatures in this universe? Paragraph question number 6 is, uh, coming on the significance of the title, the rightful inheritors of the earth. The answer is, the title of Bashir's short story is really compelling. 
reabsorbs the whole essence of Bashi's attitude to the idea of owning the land. Homo sapiens is the only species currently on earth that it presumes to own any part of it. However, Mother Earth does not recognize any property claim to any portion of it. Bashi, to his story, the rightful inheritors of the earth, proclaims that all living beings are the rightful inheritors of the earth. They are created by the same God who has given shape to human beings and so they should have a share of Doran on everything that God has created. That there is nothing any so-called honor may do about it. In the story, we see Bashi's wife Fabi of Fatima Bashi complains that Though the jackfruits are ripened, it seems they will be getting any since the squirrels and the crews are feasting on it. She doesn't even need to mention the matter of grass and the mangoes, which are all eaten up by the birds and bats. Bashi, at this complaint, says that all creatures have a right on all things available in this world. He says, now, while we are the owners of this land without a doubt, the birds, bees, reptiles and insects too have a right to these things just as we have. He in a way says that the earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. All things are connected like the blood that unites one family. Uh, this is why he even feels that even a cobra has a right in his land. Though he at first feels that to shun away the cobra which paid him a visit, he later feels really for it. He understands that the whole world is taken over by man, and so there is no place of Doran for the animals. If everyone starts to tell the cobra to go away from the land, he feels that the cobra will have nowhere else to go. We often forget that man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. The earth is sacred and men and animals are but one part of it. We have to treat the earth with respect so that it lasts for centuries to come and is a place of wonder and beauty for the next generation too. Now it's time to move on to the next paragraph, the third paragraph of the essay. So the third paragraph of the essay can be written as an answer to the paragraph question number 1, 2 and 4 from the textbook. So let's see what is paragraph question number 1. Uh, what is the narrator's initial reaction to the trespasses on his farm? How does it change? Paragraph question number 2 is... Uh, what are the narrator's thoughts on the gun? Why does he consider that guns should have never been invented? Now, paragraph question number four is, Comment on the reason the villagers do not allow the bats to be harmed. Now, the answer is, In the story, the rightful inheritors of the earth we see how even the traditional customs of a religion helps to protect the species on earth. This can be seen when Bashi's wife and Kassim go to kill the bats. In fact, there are two different attitudes or perspectives regarding birds and animals on the farm can be seen in this story. One is the perspective that the entire earth, including the flora and fauna, is created for man. This view that the entire earth belongs to man and he can exploit it for his own benefit is the dominant perspective that we can see in the present world. The narrator's wife Anna Harkazin in the story represent this view. At first, when the narrator's wife realized that the rats are creating troubles, she poisoned them. In the same way, she and her cousin decided to kill the bats using a gun. Contrary to this perspective is the belief that the entire beings on earth have equal rights to live and human beings depend on the surroundings for their survival. Without safeguarding the earth, its abundant plant and animal life, we have no future. 
That's why the narrator tried to dissuade his wife from killing bats. He claimed guns should never have been invented. At the beginning of the story, the narrator assumes that his future is secured since he could buy a two-acre plot with the coconut palms and all the house. He imagines that for the rest of his life, he would be able to live happily in that house by using the earnings he can garner by selling the coconuts. Once Bashir and his wife settle in the newly bought house, they notice some trespassers or visitors who disturb the house. These visitors include birds, butterflies, crows, hawks, mongooses, foxes, a cobra, squirrels, rats, bats, etc. Bashi at first feels disturbed by these creatures, but with a sound thought on the issue, he comes to the acceptance that what these creatures do is the right way. Bashi now allows to support his wife's idea that they should use a gun to kill the bats, the foxes and the polecats. He doesn't support her in this and tells that guns might not have invented at all since it raises threats at the life of God's creatures. His wife and cousin go to kill the bats but they return with the frightened faces because the people who live nearby the temple came against them with the threatening words. They said that if these people shoot at the bats, they would kill them for sure. But she felt really happy hearing this. He finally tells out his decision that they should leave the things how it is. The reality is that human beings have mostly focused on the utilitarian value of nature. This is why they fail to see the beauty of a crow when it feasts on a jackfruit. Now we will move on to the fourth paragraph of the essay. The fourth paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number five from the textbook. So that paragraph question number five is write a note on the narrator's scientific way of living. The answer is in the rightful inheritance of the earth, Bashir tries to protect, project the idea of scientific way of living. This scientific way of living is the same method described in the poem Tropic Cascade by Kemal P. Dung by using one animal control the other animal population. Bashir says, what we need is a new scientific way of living, a new way that helps us to live without killing any living creature. He says this when the matter of the disturbance of the rats is reported. So we are supposed to think that what he implies to a scientific way of controlling them is by using some cats culling the rat population. This is evident once we see his wife going to get some poison to kill the rats. He doesn't support the idea. And when the poison is applied, the list of the dead creatures includes a cat too. So we understand that he might have started trying out such a scientific way of culling the rat population before letting his wife take any drastic actions. Uh, this is what Bashir's scientific way of controlling the rats. The order of cats deters rats from coming out in the open to search for food and water. This indirectly will decrease the chances of successful reproduction for rats. Cats have worked as the world's fuzzy exterminators for at least 10,000 years. That is, when a wild cat cozied up to the nutrients, the first human farmers who stored grain, which attracted rodents. Agile and nocturnal, cats need little light to hunt. With the rodents most active at night, cats became the perfect nemesis. Cats may eat rats, but they also deter rats from coming nearby as cats mark their territory not with urine, but by simply rubbing up, uh, rubbing up against the things. Even this scent of a cat can make the rats scatter. When a cats are put in place, they will kill off a lot of the rat population. 
The other rats will get a whiff of the cat's uh, pheromones and a bug out and leave the area. As far as rod and the control goes, it's nearly 100% effective. It is the only long-term permanent solution there is to control rats. Bashir is aware of all these possibilities. He's a pacifist who doesn't love to torture any creature, big or small. We know that the stand taken by the narrator is correct, as our very existence will be in peril if we do not protect this earth. At present, all of us are facing the problems of climate change, and the reasons for climate change are nothing but our ways of exploiting and destroying the environment. Misusing the faculty of imagination, human beings started owing natural resources as commodities. They tried to prevent other creatures and fellow human beings from using them. They put in place bar barriers to the needy who were equally entitled to these resources naturally. Now let's discuss the concluding paragraph of the essay. Man, animals and plants have the same creator who called them into being out of love. In general, animals are not to be used cruelly or exploited without any regard for their worth in the sight of God. The worst thing towards our fellow creatures is not to hate them, but to be indifferent to them. This is the essence of inhumanity. The rightful inheritance of the earth clearly illustrates the moral that humans are not the owners of the earth, but share it with other beings too. Man should honor the creator and other creatures and treat them carefully and responsibly. We should understand that the love for all living creatures is the noblest attribute of man. So now we have discussed the, all the short answer questions, essays and paragraph questions from the chapter The Rightful Inheritance of the Earth. So in the next class we will begin the chapter Biodiversity.